Hey there, everyone. It's the full moon. I'm Ananda, the Galactic Mystic, and this is Navigational Astrology. This is your Aries full moon forecast. We have a lot to talk about. All right, my friends. How are you? It's been a wild month, right? Well, I say month, but no, oh yeah, it's been a wild month. <laughs> As I'm recording this, um, the uh, news came out that the Sinclair Media Group was hacked or something. So that's pretty interesting. The volcanoes continue. The one in the Canary Islands, La Palma, ha is showing no signs of stopping. And we have had a lot of information coming at us um, to the point that you may have been tuning some of it out because it's so much. And that's just on the world stage. In our personal lives, we are in the Libra Aries cycle where we are developing new skills, we are breaking new ground, we're laying down the law in a new way when it comes to self and others. And this is how we navigate being a self that relates to other selves. And truly, you know, in grander spiritual terms, other people really are just other selves. They are other us's. It's pretty deep. So this Aries full moon at 27 degrees of Aries is going to be exact on October 20th, 2021 at 1156 a.m. And that is Eastern time. <clears throat> Excuse me. This full moon is exactly conjunct the Andromeda galaxy. We have some mythology to go over because there's a lot interwoven here. Each lunar cycle has a lesson for us, a job, something we are to take to task. And this cycle, the Libra Aries cycle, is about dropping the victim mentality, dropping, blaming everyone else for our circumstances, dropping this lack of empowerment, this, this leaning towards giving away our power. All right. So with that in mind, let's talk about Andromeda. The Andromeda galaxy is located at 27 degrees of Aries, and that is exactly where our full moon is. So the Andromeda galaxy is the closest galaxy to our own Milky Way. And the Milky Way is in the constellation of Andromeda. So there's the constellation of Andromeda and there's the Andromeda galaxy. So the Andromeda galaxy and the Milky Way are actually moving towards each other. And one day we'll just totally smush and collide or explode or, you know, whatever happens when two galaxies uh, smush up, right? Pretty crazy. So a lot of times when I talk about the Andromeda galaxy, I'll sort of say this is about freedom. And that's true, but there's much more to it. This is about, in a nutshell, and we will get into the mythology because you're going to love this. This is about all the things that we do, the choices that we make, the ways we prep, you know, twist ourselves into a pretzel, all of the things that we do so that we can be free or feel like we're free or gain freedom, maintain our freedom. There's a huge thing about not wanting to be put in a box because if we're in a box with all these labels on it, that's not freedom, right? If we are people pleasing to the point of harming the self 
and harming others, that's not free. If we're going to spin whatever we're saying or doing or being for the to please others, that's not free. Those are chains. That's chains. That is slavery. That is being captured. That is, ooh, all right. So let's talk about mythology. So in Greek mythology, Andromeda was the beautiful daughter of Queen Cassiopeia and King Cepheus. So Queen Cassiopeia liked to brag about Andromeda being so beautiful. She was more beautiful than the nymph, the ocean nymphs and more beautiful than so-and-so and who's he what's it's and everybody. Nobody is more beautiful than Andromeda, according to Queen Cassiopeia. So this really pissed off Poseidon, the ocean god, who's that's Neptune. Um, and he sent a sea monster to like mess up the land and mess, you know, destroy everybody's crops and knock their houses down and, you know, just create general chaos. So the Cassi Queen Cassiopeia and King Cepheus were, you know, they needed to appease this monster because so they went to an oracle and consulted with them. And the oracle said that Andromeda had to be sacrificed to this monster. That, that was the only way that the monster would stop the destruction of their lands. And so Andromeda was chained to a cliff um, at the edge of the ocean and, you know, basically left there to await her impending death and vicious murder uh, via this ocean monster. So Perseus heard about this. He happened to have the uh, head of Medusa. This is, you know, I'm wrapping this up. There's a lot more to it, which we will get into more in a moment. So Perseus shows up with the head of Medusa and, you know, turns the, this beast to stone and Andromeda's life was spared. So think about this for a moment. Here's Andromeda minding her own business, being gorgeous, not her fault, minding her own business. Her mother is, you know, being really boastful and creates the situation that Andromeda really has nothing to do with. So then, you know, even down to being offered to this sea monster, being chained to this rocky cliff to save the land. That wasn't her choice either. That was kind of kind of Cassiopeia's fault, probably still too. I mean, but who knows? Was this oracle correct? Who even knows, right? But bo bottom line, none of this was like Andromeda's choice. These were all these sort of gravitational pulls of fate that got her in this situation, even down to Perseus saving her. She didn't have anything to do with that. All of this stuff just happening to her. So when I was looking at the chart for this full moon, I found something really surprising. I'm going to show it to you. Okay. So here is our moon at 27 degrees of Aries. Exactly opposing is the sun. We have asteroid Atlantis here. We have Mars and then we have Medusa. The asteroid Medusa is exactly conjunct Mars. Mars is the planetary ruler of Aries. So we have this obvious amplification of this storyline. Mm -mm. And I just want to say, you know, um, there's a lot going on with memories of Atlantis, people feeling the draw to um, do a lot of past life discovery stuff. And I just want to say that that is right in alignment with everything that's happening in our world. And that's a whole other topic, but I just want to say that if you've been thinking about that, about doing some of that work, take this as your green light and, uh, you know, find someone to work with, dig up some of those memories and see what's there for you. Anyway, Medusa. 
So what is Medusa's role here? Let's talk about that. So Medusa wasn't just like the, uh, you know, the magical talisman that saved Andromeda from the sea monster, right? No, there's more to this. Medusa was a Gorgon, but she's the only one of her family that was not like a hideous monster. She just happened to be beautiful, just like Andromeda. Her sisters, you know, the other Gorgons were like dreadful, horrifying, scary monster Gorgon things. But Medusa was beautiful. She was the exception in her family. She was a virgin priestess in the temple of Athena. So here she was hanging out at the temple, being beautiful. And then here comes Perseus, who is like, hey, girl. And she's like, no, thank you. I am a priestess. I've taken a vow of chastity. I will remain a virgin. No, thanks, Perseus. So he rapes her because that's what they do in mythology, right? Everybody gets raped. Any beautiful girl who says no just gets raped. And he even raped her on the temple steps. So almost like a slap in the face of Athena. So here's Medusa. She's now pregnant. Perseus got her pregnant, of course. And she goes to Athena and she's, she's devastated. And she tells Athena what happened. Athena becomes enraged and turns Medusa into this monster. Medusa just happened to have beautiful hair, so her hair was turned into snakes, and she was just made hideous. So as fate would have it, through a whole other situation, Perseus was given the task to fetch the head of Medusa. And this was supposed to be, you know, he was supposed to die. Like it wasn't, he wasn't supposed to survive it. So here Perseus is, Medusa's pregnant with his children. Okay. But Athena helped him, Hermes helped him. And so he gets to, you know, this faraway land where Medusa was living, you know, far away, being hideous and miserable and not bothering anyone. None of this was her fault. So here he comes and he cuts off Medusa's head. As she's, you know, lying there dying, her children come out of her neck. Pegasus was one of her children. I'm sorry. The mother of Pegasus could not be bad. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, okay, so the story, there's more to it, but here we have the basic theme. So still, same as Andromeda, Medusa is minding her own business, being beautiful, being a priestess, minding her own business. She gets raped. Then she gets victim blamed. Then she gets turned into a monster and sent off, you know, goes off to live until she gets her head cut off. And then this is the head that is then used to save Andromeda from this monster. So here's my question. Do we have the full story of these, you know, when it comes to Medusa and Andromeda? Do we have all of the information? Was there really nothing they could do? Maybe, but maybe not. This is what I mean about blaming others. So maybe it was Athena's fault that Medusa wasn't safe in the temple. Maybe, I don't know. Were, the, were there no guards? Where was the snake that's, that's supposed to... Um, Ananta, I think, is the snake's name, Athena's snake that was supposed to guard the temple. But like, the only way to hush that up 
is to get rid of Medusa because she's now pregnant. If we have a pregnant virgin, they know she was raped. The only way to hush that up, the only way to silence it is to get rid of her. So think about how we do that in our lives, how we, sorry, I've got like something stuck to my lip. <laughs> how we shut down information that maybe proves that we are, we have some responsibility in a situation. So it's this avoidance of the truth, the spin of the story, so that we can continue our shit behavior. I feel like I'm being a little harsh here, but seriously, enough of that, enough. This, blame, this spreading out of blame and taking none for yourself. Now, I'm not saying that we are responsible for everything that happens to us, I'm not. But I am saying that it's incredibly important that we own what is ours to own and that we require others to own what is theirs to own in order to be in relationship with us. This is where we bring this balance of relating self and other. So I'm going to bring back up the chart and we're going to talk about some more things here. So our beacon card guidance for this full moon cycle is strength. And we need that inner strength to see ourselves clearly, to see other people clearly, and to require new things from ourselves and others. I'm talking about integrity supreme, my friends. How badass are you going to be with your integrity? Are you going to walk your talk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, are we going to just slip into these streams of gravity where all this shit happens to us? I don't know why I'm cussing so much today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, another feature of, of this is, uh, of course, the opposition with Mars, the opposition with Atlantis. Medusa, but Venus here is at the great attractor. So again, this is more of that theme. The great attractor, I actually, I wrote a blog about it. I'll put uh, the link for it in the description box. The great attractor is this weird thing in space. And whenever a planet, something, you know, in our natal charts or in the sky is connecting to it. It, it activates this gravitational pull. Now it's not inherently good or bad. It's just like, you know how sometimes you make a certain choice and then everything starts moving really fast and you can't stop it. And, and you just are like, going downstream and then there's the waterfall ahead and you can't swim out of the way and you've just got to hold your breath, right? So for a lot of people, a lot of people, whatever is happening in your relationship, like some people are going to be like slipping into this stream where they are like rapidly moving towards that cliff in the end. And other people slip into this gravitational stream and they're just like rapidly and they're like smushed up like like Andromeda Galaxy and the Milky Way are going to be you know it's like whatever is happening relationship wise in relating to others there's this gravity this amplification this acceleration that is really a cool feature of this full moon, but one to be aware of. Because if you are, if you are flirting with a gravitational stream of your life that you don't actually want to happen, you're just like toying with it. You're just going to toy with it. I'm just, no, 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 no. 
don't be doing stuff that you don't want the consequences of right now because things will be compounding fast. That's my message. So this is the culmination point. Jupiter is now direct. Saturn is direct. Pluto is direct. Mercury is direct. Gravitational streams, the pull of our decisions, the weight of our decisions amplified. So that's why I say that it's so important that we check ourselves and we check our integrity. There ain't no reason to lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. I feel like I've been saying that a lot lately, but it's really, really important. Let's pull, you want to, let's do a, uh, let's do an Oracle card, right? I've got the prophet. What do you have to tell us about this Aries full moon conjunct Andromeda opposing Medusa? Venus is a great attractor. What do we need to know? To you, the earth yields her fruit. Let's read. To you, the earth yields her fruit, and you shall not want if you but know how to fill your hands. It is in exchanging the gifts of the earth that you shall find abundance and be satisfied. Yet, unless the exchange be in love and kindly justice, it will but lead some to greed and others to hunger. Okay, that's about integrity. That's the message. Find your integrity. Figure it out. Figure out how to have more. Figure out how to have the courage, that inner strength of the strength card. To not be afraid to tell the truth to yourself and others. This is leading edge consciousness and leading edge relationships. This is what it's about. It's very exciting times. I love you like crazy. How are you? How are things going? Leave me a message. Oh, I didn't even talk about the Pluto square. The Pluto square <laughs> in this full moon. The Sunday video I did it's about sun square Pluto. So I'll put that in the box below as well. Highly, highly pertinent to everything I've been talking about. What are we afraid to see? What have we been afraid to see? And what have we been doing to keep it hidden? Sounds heavy. But this is an initiation to the next level of integrity. Mm. Mm. thank you so much for being here with me for liking and subscribing come back every day for dailies come back every sunday for the sunday video and you guys gosh check you know let's connect on social media check out my website get a reading all the things facebook group forum all the stuff newsletter mm. let's be in touch because spicy times.